Everyone starts with one objective. Don't lie to yourself. You want to look good, hmm. and that's completely fine. You know. I would start... be very suspicious of a 16-year-old who came up to me and said, "You know, I'm really into holistic wellness." Oh no way! I no mean, that guy's full of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not just a 63-year-old who's never gone to the gym. He was also somebody who has these chronic diseases. They are more disciplined than us. They know how to sacrifice more than us. And if they decide to put their minds to something, they will probably out. work and out do us regarding discipline 5 to 7 pm you can be the prime minister of india <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to meet my dad at that time he's going to be in the gym i found this exercise and after 3 days my lower back pain was worse than ever and now i have another <laughs> slip disc <laughs> if, if you're rich have blueberries and if you're poor have pomegranate <laughs> okay. something that he explained to me recently only it's called the wipe your ass syndrome essentially what that means Welcome everyone to another episode of the Overcorrection. Today we are speaking with Ankush Dattar. He is a certified finance bro and certified gym bro. He also has a book coming out. It's called The Health and Wealth Paradox with Harper Collins. He is most importantly a very old friend of mine and uh, someone I know who is extremely passionate about health and fitness. He has also done something very remarkable with how he has trained his father and completely changed his health and fitness from being someone who could barely crouch down difficulty picking something up to someone who is now deadlifting 120 kgs 135 last i checked <laughs> okay wow very impressive so let's just start how what was this journey like how did it start yeah So the toughest thing to actually get him to go to the gym, right, was poking him for years. You try to poke someone to get to move their ass, that's not a proven strategy. If that worked, mm. everyone would be moving their ass mm. by now, you know? It's not a So you have to find ways to actually get this person to take the first step, right? So essentially the most difficult part of getting i think my dad to the gym was poking him to actually reach the gym right i'll tell okay. you uh, what that is and I'll, actually i'll tell you what this phenomenon is okay. something that he explained to me recently <laughs> only it's called the wipe your ass syndrome right okay. so essentially what that means uh, your parents who have raised you since you were a child have been wiping your ass since you've been born and brought up for the first 4 5 years whether yeah. you like it or not they are wiping your ass right and that's going on as you grow and you become a more mature adult right you start to develop your own ideas you start to mature more into your own personality mm-hmm. right and, and even after wiping your ass from 4 to 5 then they're metaphorically wiping your ass in 10 different other ways exactly. till the time you're even older exactly and then you finally grow up and now you're wiping your ass <laughs> metaphorically <laughs> and non metaphorically yeah so then so essentially uh, what that means is someone who has wiped your ass when you were a toddler will find it very difficult to take your advice mm. right and ironically this is not something that i looked up this is something my dad told me <laughs> after and this was around 3 years into his complete transformation mm. and how he came about telling me i basically i had written that article with the whole truth on mm. how my dad completely you know transformed himself so there are a lot of people actually messaged me how did you do it so i said first thing i'm going to do is give him the feedback why don't i ask him how he did it mm. rather than me telling them how he did it mm. right essentially he would know better so this is how he told me he said and why do people fail at trying to convince their parents so just like me i'm sure there are thousands of people who have some kind of healthy lifestyle right and they're trying to convince their parents you know change mm. the way you eat or uh, try to go to the gym but everyone knows it's good for you but people still don't do it right it's probably because of of this right so you have to find some unique way to kind of convince them yeah. right so i think there's also this um, there's almost the parents i've often heard parents say 
the almost reversal of that where it's like kids will listen to any adult but their parents yeah <laughs> have you noticed this like uh, so it's almost like this river hey you wipe my ass i'm not going to listen to yeah. you <laughs> so there's also anyways that's just an offshoot but yeah i've certainly um uh, seen a lot of people who are struggling to get their parents into good health and i think there's certainly a level of privilege we as the younger generation have which has afforded us this luxury by the age of 30 to just be have so much discretionary time and income to spend on our wellness when for them wellness was sort of you know making sure that checkbook checkbook is balancing at the end of the month and those things took a priority there was also much less awareness at that time and let's face it i think you can tell even at age 30 it's so difficult to change some of your habits imagine what that is at age 60 i'd like to touch upon that point also yes we've been lucky can't deny the fact that uh, so i think we became friends in 2011 i remember mm. when asim introduced us mm. and whatever two common friends we would have met and i think we connected because we were so obsessed with fitness in yeah. our own way right it's kind of tempered down uh you, you had just started your marathoning journey then at that time 2011 yeah, with and half every, marathons at that and time and everyone starts with one objective don't lie to yourself you want to look good mm. and that's completely fine you know if you want to look good lose some weight uh that was my uh, intention i would be start. very suspicious of a 16 year old who came up to me and said you know i'm really into holistic wellness oh no way i no mean way. that guy's full of shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you grow into holistic wellness you can't just start with holistic wellness because it's very subjective for each person it is very very subjective right so essentially when we met like both of us i'm sure we were obsessed at the time looking a certain way of an aesthetic and so over the years i used to be very obsessed with fitness per se mm-hmm. at least 9 to 10 years i was obsessed primarily with fitness and not health and mm. this is something that needs to be understood by a lot of people okay. fitness does not mean health right health also does not mean fitness but good health is dependent on you being a certain level of fit correct right they are interdependent on each other but they are not the same right correct. i'll give you an idea of why i'm actually saying this i was into fitness till 2020 and now i'm more into health and fitness over the last 4 and 4 years what does that mean so during the pandemic um i mean everything had gone here by like i said with my parents and all of these things uh my cousin brother actually who was living in pune right he suddenly uh, he passed away and uh, it didn't look like he was sick or you know any of these he didn't have any of these issues if mm. you looked at him he was pretty fine I, i'd met him like 3 weeks ago uh we had gone out at the time had a good time and so it was a it's a big shock and it's i'm still kind of in shock mm. of that moment right uh so essentially i questioned myself that time that if he could go away right uh what am what how can this not happen to me mm. essentially right so i the first time my aunt told me you know why don't you go check your blood reports and so i actually checked my blood reports and my cholesterol was very high mm. genetically uh genetically non genetically whatever that is my dad had a bypass in 2018 he is a heart patient uh my granddad my dad both have diabetes right uh still it took me this one moment to kind of get that self realization i saw that level of cholesterol despite being at the peak level of my fitness you were running marathons by uh, this point i was at so i had written that article also with the whole truth how i got my <laughs> cholesterol levels down started the article with saying i was at the peak of my fitness 13% body fat uh, i had a six pack at that time thought you know this is you can't get better than this <laughs> but it's a completely different story about what's actually brewing inside of you mm. right found out my cholesterol levels were high tempered my lifestyle since then that has been my primary focus and everything else that comes is a by product right mm. so it's just like what they say you know health is 
invisible to the naked eye just like wealth you don't know whether a person mm. is actually healthy or not right a blood report will actually give you a better idea and one of the more important things why i'm mentioning this i think in our friend circle also there and the people we know not just our friend circle just the people our age and people mm. around us there is this uh, misconception that if you're thin you're looking a certain way you're fine right if yeah. you're fit you're looking a certain way you're fine. you're fine trust me you don't know you're fine till you actually take this next step right 1000% i think uh, there are a lot of levels to which you could not be fine on and i wanted to talk about one which i think is kind of fundamental to our generation which is the mobility aspect of it we can get it i mean there's cholesterol there is your lung capacity <laughs> there is your cardiovascular capacity there's a lot but mobility is one thing i wanted to talk about which will bring us back to your father's training because from my following of it for the last few years it is heavily based on his ability to now have range of motion in his joints again and i think that is what a lot of people struggle with i just wanted to talk about this the deep squat okay we will put up pictures of what ankush's dad's deep squat or if you can you can't even call it a deep squat <laughs> at the start you can't even you can barely call it a squat what yeah. he was doing it was a uh difficulty bent or bending <laughs> yeah. over position that's it it was not a squat you can't you can't squat you can't reach forward into him bouncing right now in the deep squat from side to side in 3 years 2 3 years yeah 2 years is a good timeline 2 years and 2 years is uh, uh, people think oh 2 years why oh, could never 2 years is nothing, nothing. it's nothing <laughs> absolutely absolutely if uh, you know in finance what is in finance what type of timelines you look at you look at 5 years you look Minimum. at 10 years So minimum 2 years is nothing and this can happen in 2 years yeah not that it will happen for everyone it may happen faster it may happen in 3 years 3 years is nothing so mobility is one of these things where people who can look very fit can not have it and i think there are certain th- and the best way to long term look fit is to have mobility because to long term look fit i mean these aesthetic goals are basically a combination of honestly very rudimentary strength training and diet yeah if you can watch Absolutely. your diet and just do very basic training you will achieve a 95% percentile athletic lean ripped looking physique past that then you want to get into health you want to get into performance everything else starts counting yeah and mobility is at the cornerstone of being able to pursue your athletic potential yeah so i'll give you an idea how in terms of progression how it actually started mm. uh my friends and people who are probably following me on social media or people who've read uh the blog they probably know about the chronological mm. progress of my dad from day 1 to the start uh but the first thing that he did right which was a crazy thing uh when we forced him to go to the gym eventually he just went i think it was out of frustration he said let me just go mm. right these people are not going to get off my back at all it was my mom and me right my mom was not telling him go to the gym just get some movement i was telling him go to the gym <laughs> you know like join a gym mm. because i have read so much about strength training when you're 60 when you're 62 but i didn't actually know till i'm now seeing it with my dad and i'm actually seeing what these research papers actually talk about what these stories actually talk about right so the first step was just poking him getting him so frustrated getting him to the gym so i think it was out of frustration i don't know what it was <laughs> he went to the gym and he said i am just paying the fees like i'm not even going up to the gym like i'm not even <laughs> checking it out he paid the entire fees he paid the trainer fees right for the year Came he signed for up for the year <laughs> he paid the fees and you know personal trainer fees whatever there are bomb he paid he said i'm paying first and i'm seeing later that's what he did so what he did was he i think he felt the pinch he told me this afterwards that he wants to feel the pinch of going there also apart from just showing up one is the financial pinch mm. two is of course now he's more motivated to go to the gym i uh, read in the article he had a moment where someone had to help him lift his bag up on a flight yeah and can yeah. you just imagine one day if to one of us like you know we're young right now and one day someone had to help me lift my bag up i would be destroyed i don't want to even 
think of that moment in my mind i can't like, imagine I, it like i don't want to think like, about it what happened to me <laughs> like when did this happen so yeah i think uh, that moment is pretty powerful and i think that may have given him another type of pinch yeah that did that was in the back of his mind obviously that was in the back of his mind because that's what he told me after he didn't when he was more into the mm. progression of the gym oh so essentially he and also i believe uh, this is a shout out to sandeep if he's listening to this uh very rare to find a trainer who is so invested in the client okay. right who has who gives the client such realistic goals uh who understands the profile of the client so my dad essentially uh he is a type 2 diabetic he's he had he was also in the hospital he had a he had a bypass surgery 2018 so he's not he's not just a 63 year old who's never gone to the gym he was also somebody who's has these chronic diseases right so it was important for him to tell sandeep also regarding mm. these things right so now sandeep is someone who understands right he would accordingly curate a plan to slowly begin right but how i would start with my dad i'd i'd sh- shared some photos and videos yeah, also yeah. it's all available on social media right so he started with simple things he didn't say let's go to the gym start lifting weights go to the gym i want to be able to bend my back first i can't bend my back i want to be able to do that first that's my first objective okay right? second objective get into a deeper squat just sit in a deeper squat you don't want to go and uh, lift a barbell squat mm-hmm. and uh, you don't want to do any of these things right take videos of me right so he was the one who actually said start taking videos of me and then when i saw his progress over 3 4 months of him being able to bend his back being uh, able to yeah this quick question on that where did uh, the decision say he wants to bend? is this something sandeep told him or you kind of have been putting it into his head that mobility first or did he intrinsically have this intuition that you know i need to be able to get into a deep squat i need to be able to touch my toes intrinsically as well as sandeep both okay it was both the things it was a mix so, so it's it- interesting to find sandeep uh, you know a gym trainer you typically find them focusing on you know your short term aesthetic goals but prioritizing something like being able to do it i don't think you should squat if you can't first at least get a half decent deep squat yeah yeah you know like you should just prioritize being able to deep squat first and then move on to adding load and stuff like that yeah. so it's really good that that's a great starting point otherwise you'll just see people oh he's a trainer are unko work unko nahi lagega ki workout hua hai na to uh just throw some weight on there just to get them feeling the thing i was like no 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 man don't don't do that you're messing stuff up so that's kudos to sandeep there exactly and so yeah so 3 4 months in you started seeing the progress yeah coming back to uh, the mobility part so like you, like i told you regarding the story hmm. uh it was it, it started as mobility first be able to move hmm. yourself enough right then move on to progression mm. with weights yeah people right? are seeing these photos now of the 120 kg deadlift yeah. they're like okay let's go get the deadlift bar day one no 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 exactly day one is holding on to the bench and just trying to shimmy your way down into a deep squat exactly so going from progression of mobility then start to add a little weights hmm? do your regular uh, hammer curls bicep curls a normal squat be getting comfortable at home continue taking videos every time you add a weight come home take a video mm. build that chronological progress so i had i've built a separate gallery in my folder so i was able to give you yeah, all yeah, the photos we're, we're videos gonna, we're going to make some fun yeah yeah because i have an entire folder from his first day of not being able to bend his back fast forward two and a half years which uh, he just did uh, his 135 kg deadlift for five reps is <laughs> perfect <laughs> Your dad's going to become I, a fitness influencer I bro without can, knowing it. I've told him that you can start your Instagram page for one reason, right? Because everything is science backed. There's nothing that is anecdotal. Mm. So he is somebody uh, just moving since you brought that topic up. He is someone who's you come to my house and you just go to his youtube home page okay. uh, mike israel the science of ah. <laughs> the science of mobility he mm. knows every uh, fitness influencers ideology philosophy so it's a consolidation of his knowledge as well as what sandeep tells him to do it's just not yeah. that 
yeah i think as much as we as a younger generation say criticize some of our older generation for not uh, being fit something we spoke about earlier they are more disciplined than us they know how to sacrifice more than us than us and if they decide to put their minds to something they will probably outwork and outdo us yeah you know regarding discipline 5 to 7 pm you can be the prime minister of india <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to meet my dad at that time he's going to be in the gym right you can go to the gym you can talk about whatever you want in between his sets right as soon as the set begins so when i go to the gym right he is he is we don't talk we don't when we i go in the mornings usually very early in the morning but when i go in the evening it's like everyone tells me oh why don't you talk to your dad and all i said he is in the zone he's not he's <laughs> and i am in the zone when we see we see each other throughout the day so uh, just coming back to how he progressed to this kind of inhuman strength it's inhuman only because of 135 kg deadlift even somebody who's 20 years old cannot do it mm-hmm. right and shouldn't do it if shouldn't do like it. just cuz he's doing it shouldn't do it exactly he has one of the things is that he's now old enough to realize that nobody cares you know it's your journey you think that somebody else is thinking about your 135 kg deadlift in the gym mm. no one is thinking about it that person who's come to the gym he wants to lose he or she wants to lose that 1 kg they focused on themselves they don't care about how much you're bench pressing so that should give you motivation to do it the right way yes that should give you motivation because i'm sure guys think about some you know some some girl in the gym is seeing yeah. how much you I guarantee you no one is no one is looking at you nobody cares about how much you can lift in the gym right mm. so that is also an additional motivation right which i have realized and which he just happened to realize over a 6 7 month period right so essentially how he progressed was this bringing small changes first mobility then slowly introducing weights right then slowly beginning with a deadlift without any weight for just one month two months without any weight just getting the form right getting the form right getting the form i mean perfect his form is is art like it's it's just art a perfectly for me art is subjective a perfectly executed deadlift and squat is something that i love to watch and mm. i'd love to see his technique so just the bar 20 kgs 20 kg slowly then building in 10 yeah. 10 10 and then you you're a big uh, you're a big fan of the 2.5 pound plate not 2.5 0.5 now <laughs> gone further 0.5 kg 0.5 kg, KG. Huh, yeah yeah 0.5 kg so, so uh, that's his idea yeah. not my idea so that was how he helped me right so because once you reach a certain point in the gym let's say now he's progressing slowly right he's of a certain age so automatically his body is going to take more time to recover right so let's say he's reached a 40 kg deadlift on the each each side mm-hmm. 40 kg eventually that's after like a year of uh, doing his uh, that's a total 100 kg deadlift that's a total 100 kg, kg deadlift, deadlift yeah. right just casually talk about 100 kg deadlifts uh, now what's the next step essentially what somebody would do add a 10 or add a 5 mm. just think about it logically oh yeah <laughs> there's no logic or common sense being used yeah you move from 140 to 150 that means so what you're telling me is in the next 3 years i'll be able to lift a building <laughs> you know like every time 10 kg is is that what you're telling me the human body has no. a limit and in fact i'd say once you reach a weight unless you have a chugli just to deadlift heavier uh you there are so many more other things you can do you can start building your cardiovascular while maintaining that heavy deadlift probably the healthiest way to build your cardiovascular is when you have a strong deadlift and you can just keep doing it exactly so uh, so he bought the 0.5 kg hmm. he got it to the gym the best part about that that weight is is such a big teacher i would like to say uh he told me that stop using the ones right now i now i trust him with advice because he is very science backed he knows exactly like what I the timelines are when <laughs> these people decide to do something <laughs> now you are not going to beat them at it yeah 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 <laughs> not at all not at all so uh, he got the point 5 and now my bench press which i was not progressing beyond a certain point everyone on their bench press or whatever on the deadlift also 
there's a certain point where you plateau mm. because you just keep adding tens no one yeah. has told you mm. to add it. no one in the gym has told him so when he started adding 0.5s even the trainers used to now he's friends with everyone all the trainers come and talk to him about like biomechanics and all that stuff and uh, essentially they told him sir now come on add add 10 you know he's like why like what is explain me the logic of adding 10 more kgs right mm-hmm. if you can explain me i didn't know sir you can you can do 100 you can do 110 you know that's the kind of advice you generally get no one will tell you just add a 0.5 because there's nothing sexy about it it takes time it takes a ridiculous amount imagine adding 40 and then 40.5 and then 0.5 0.5 0.5 0.5 right even i was a little skeptical this was maybe one and a half year ago 35 i added added 0.5 yeah. <laughs> over there i was like am i really doing this but now i can like bench press 42 kgs on each side and i would like to thank him for so i wanted to tell a little story yeah. it's a uh, related to this basically in this village there was a family and they had a, a baby goat was born and they had a kid in the family is about 5 years old <laughs> and um, the mother tells the boy that every day he has to pick up the goat take it to the top of a hill and let it graze there and bring it back down so this 5 year old go- boy is very easily able to pick up this baby goat and take it up the hill and bring it back down and every day he does this the next day he does it the next day he does it he does this for a whole 6 months the baby goat has been getting bigger but every day the boy is able to carry the goat feeling no perceptible change whatsoever at no point does he feel the goat is tangibly heavier than it was yesterday but at the end of a year that boy is now carrying a full size goat up a hill and down without on any given day him technically feeling that i have changed something that i'm doing and i think the 0.5 kg uh plate so how to even call it that yeah <laughs> 0.5 kg plate is uh growing the weight just like this goat you know that's a ridiculous coincidence that you said this story after the 0.5 because there's a chapter in my book the power of compounding right i mm. won't give too much away where i'm talking about in ve- compounding in in finance that you'd be seeing a lot of content yeah, on that yeah. right people just use it very very casually people talk about compounding in finance they don't actually apply the actual principles in real life mm. you know the same principle applies so milo of crutin uh, is the is the person you're talking about okay yeah it's a greek story of milo yes, of yes, crutin yes. <laughs> crutin or crouton yeah, or yeah. whatever the pronunciation is right so that's it ties there's also an interesting story which i documented in one of my blogs which morgan housel okay. covered where uh, there are two plants both these plants are essentially being watered the same way right one plant is not being put too much into the sunlight to accelerate its growth mm. right some in sometimes in sunlight sometimes in the in the shade so that this plant grows sustainably but there is another plant which is being watered the same way right it's being put into the sunlight and it's growing at a phenomenal pace okay after a certain point right this the plant a which has been growing very sustainably by being put in sunlight for some time back in the shade essentially it's grown the same amount as plant b right but it's taken much longer for this plant to grow mm. this level by this time plant b because it's grown so fast beyond what it was actually supposed to naturally grow it starts to wither mm. completely wither and it comes back down just from where it started so if you try to force growth too a much a candle burnt at both ends yeah exactly then again coming back to what that so he started lifting now he is lifting very heavy have you noticed any changes uh, or his he probably has noticed plenty as he spoken to you about any changes how it's affected his day to day quality of life outside the gym i think very honestly our relationship with him my mom and me has improved significantly we not like we have mm. any problems we have a fantastic relationship but because he's become so energetic mm. he's become so upbeat 
he's become so full of life like i think he's just transformed as a as a human being his outlook towards life his outlook towards movement and that's essentially that's had a very positive impact i think everyone would like to move <clears throat> everyone would like to move i think about it you know he's in his 60s he's retired he finally has the time and the money he probably didn't have in his youth to enjoy life and now he's and you know people think 63 is oh people think 30 is late to start you know 63 i mean by 65 now he had a completely different life and at 65 he's got a good 15 20 years probably uh to enjoy and move so he i asked him i asked him that so now now what about the next 15 20 years he said whatever time is there right i want to spend it in the best possible way and this is the best this is the only way i can spend it in the best possible way right being I've absolutely seen, i've seen so many wealthy people older i've trained some of them all the resources in the world cannot allow you to go enjoy a game of badminton or enjoy a game of table tennis if you are in pain and really if i've seen people enjoy a game of table tennis it's a joy com- you will not see that look on their face when they buy themselves a $10,000 rolex it's Absolutely. a fundamentally different type of joy many people give up on it because the for their health it now seems so far out of reach and probably because three weeks of a new training system hasn't worked so they think it's never going to work this uh, need for instant gratification but really you're talking i'm talking 2 3 years can now affect the next 20 and the could be the best 20 if you play your cards right that's when you're retired you have the money you don't have to really worry about the future in the same way you did throughout your youth could and should be the best years of your life and i think your dad is i think get, getting now now two years later probably seeing some of the fruits of the labor how is his uh, like play does he like try to jog a bit or any like pickleball or anything he like that he is a gym bro he's a gym bro he's an okay. absolute gym bro uh, very very focused on mobility and strength okay slowly can, cardio in his own way i kind of put up that uh, i put up we had the, a little chat on the yeah yeah he was the 100 the 100 kg farmer walk yes. which he did which honestly i put it up i don't i don't remember i put it up on twitter and for me it's just like now it's very casual hmm. content oh 100 kg farmer walk okay whatever Let's put it up. Let's uh, because I enjoy uh, talking about all of these things mm-hmm. on social media, and uh, I think even the idea is that even if one person sees this and makes some kind of change, right? It's basically going to have a spillover effect. Yeah. Both I just want to say that please, please listen to how much we have stressed, how long it took to get that one hundred kg farmer walk, and. Honestly that is not a goal of his training I assure you I have not spoken to him in depth but that was not the goal of his training to do 100 kg farmer walk that is a byproduct of his training Absolutely okay? I don't want people thinking that let's start doing loaded farmers walks So I have actually I have asked him so 135 kg I know what his answer is going to be but I just want to hear him say it you know so he hit the 135 kg deadlift Uh, I remember one of the trainers also told him. So next time, one forty. He's like, why? Like, we'll see. You now we'll finish. Mm. We'll finish. If I can do six reps of this the next time, that means I can do four reps of the next weight category. And he's like, as long as I can do it, yeah. I'll do it. I'm not going to focus on one forty process yeah. or outcome. You know. And I think here's a. I'd say a message to trainers out there. give your cl- if you feel there's a chance give your clients a little more credit and if you think they should not go heavier tell them do not worry about them feeling they're not progressing or lift i know there are clients like that there are always people like that who want quick results who want to see something you can't help them anyways <laughs> coming to that i mm. think one is obviously there's a delicate balance right because if we can talk about all of this anecdotally Uh, my dad was is how he is there are people who want fast results right and mm. if you're not able to give them you have to somehow balance that right as a trainer i understand that's so hard so the communication that you so one thing that i feel is lacking you can have the best 
scientific knowledge and the best processes mm. in terms of biomechanics of lifting nutrition mm-hmm. if you're not able to communicate the message to a regular person by regular i mean someone who's an absolute beginner you're not able to communicate that it goes to waste it does not matter how knowledgeable well, you, are. you are like what we were talking about before what they say with doctors <clears throat> they say that any doctor can give you the medicine that you're supposed to take or tell you the treatment you're supposed to follow a good doctor is one who actually gets you to do it exactly as so with <laughs> trainers that's a great one yeah, yeah as so with trainers honestly if your knee is hurting i have dealt with a lot of clients who've had knee pain uh help them work through knee pain if you have knee pain you can go online right now on google uh strength strength program for knee rehabilitation you will get 10 results they are all amazing yeah whichever one you will actually do is amazing but the problem is in getting someone to do it you know everyone thinks a new trainer will <clears throat> like change they're going to give you the same program if you can't <clears throat> fix what's going wrong in your head which makes you do physio for a week and then let it go cuz you feel a little better you will be stuck in a cycle of pain for so many years and you may reach that stage where then you have to just give up on some parts of your life uh is that's something that i often quote say tell people is that 95% of the work is just showing up 5% is doing the work trust me show up at the gym show up whatever on the track to run show up at that class everything will align the hardest job to do is not the workout is to get up your lazy ass to the gym and you know it the hardest thing once you go there things start playing out so that there's that amazing quote discipline is doing something when you have absolutely zero motivation to do so mm. don't look for motivation mm. that discipline is not looking for motivation discipline is doing it whether you are motivated or not in fact discipline almost the word only has meaning for those who are not motivated yeah <laughs> i'm motivated to do something i'm <laughs> going to do, do it. it only na exactly absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. it's just off shoot yeah. i just think like some people you know who are late like all the time and i always hear them say oh but i'm i'm on time for my work and all i was like bro you care about that you'll be on time now what about things that other people care about will you not be on time for those reaching on time is equal to how much you respect that situation simple, simple as that simple as that simple i hope the friends who are watching <laughs> oh bro <laughs> are taking this i have cancelled okay. people like like not as my friends but i have stopped taking that stress like one of our common friends i used to pick him up cuz he was really close to my house <laughs> and he used to make me wait for 20 minutes <laughs> under his house every t- I, i told him i was like bro i swear to god i love you but i can't pick you up anymore it is <laughs> causing me mental trauma and it's making me feel really angry towards you and i really like you as a guy so just make your own way there it's not worth the you know like the money it takes to cab there or whatever yeah. it takes to do yeah. that let's just meet and now we have a great relationship <laughs> <laughs> communicate the issue you're having yeah seriously. don't keep it in don't keep it in if you are if the friendship is true you'll be able to freely yeah, communicate 100%. if it's not true you won't be able to yeah. communicate and i, I was like, like it, it was that simple and it actually helped and uh, <laughs> but uh, so i thought like for once we will do like a completely non political episode just health and fitness but uh, we've both read some articles um, about this idea that why fitness is a right wing idea and we were chatting about that a while earlier when we met so you want to give some background into what this whole concept was yeah so the basic background of that was there's obviously these are not conspiracy theories fairly <laughs> makes sense also fairly makes sense it was written by somebody who is very uh, inclined towards body positivity not commenting on mm. body positivity or whatever but don't use it as a reason to tell somebody to not get to move the ass that's uh. that's all i'm saying they picked they picked out right wingers who essentially spoke about like steak and resistance training and everything mm. and they attuned being healthy and fit to the concept of being fit is equal to being right wing right okay. and this spread like wildfire for some reason right and it became like a thing so that's how these articles kind of came up so maybe uh, if someone had some agenda when they were writing it they could write it as a way of saying that and to catch you to catch a clickbait saying fitness being health talking about health and fitness is equal to being right wing 
right mm. somebody who makes fitness their entire personality and there can be all sorts of like connections like you know it's a place of privilege that you come from that you have the luxury to be fit some of which like you said there are some like valid points in all this like psychological thinking and uh, that certainly seems like one of those extremely clickbaity type yeah. of things to put up uh but sadly it's something that people now believe to be true right because it's long form written articles proving their point as to why so that's the prob- that's what the issue is that making it polit- polit- politicizing the entire topic when it's actually not it's a very there's no politics to this topic at all this is almost like uh, what it's like one of those sketches right like let's try to politicize the least political thing ever yeah you know uh the honest touching upon that right all i'm not all fitness content because think about it health and fitness there's nothing new to it there's absolutely nothing new following the basics what are walking hmm. resistance training doing mobility we're not talking about anything new or spectacular we're talking about the most basic human fundamental uh problems for now what i think is happening now in the algo which is basically painful but it's just fun content for people to scroll through uh one fitness influencer will touch upon what another fitness influencer has said and saying oh he said this no scientific the research papers say this so it's wrong so what my problem is with that is that this person will make 95% of his content just calling out people mm. and 5% is the actual uh content of providing value you know because he or she knows that this is what's going to get them engagement on the algo right so that's where i think it's yeah, become yeah i mean if the motivation is engagement on the algo which it probably is because of controversy uh that sucks but on the flip side one of the benefits of the internet is to have this sort of uh, society wide fact check going on yeah but the levels of then fact checking the fact checkers that you get into this you open this pandora's box yeah and i think that box is long opened on fitness content i mean don't get me started no, on I'll... some of the things i've seen like uh, <laughs> i saw i saw this one post so the jefferson curl we'll put up a we'll put up a video of it just for people who don't know but it's essentially imagine for those who are just listening imagine just standing up straight and uh, say holding even a pretty light weight in your hand like 3 4 kgs in each hand mm. and then just rounding your spine and just going down to touch your feet with complete spinal rounding going as low as you can and then unrounding your spine and just coming straight back up after the knees over toes guy movement someone who I'm a big fan of the mm. obsession over this exercise as a solution for low back pain by the way <laughs> went up to the point where i saw this uh in the real where it's like i found this exercise and after 3 <clears throat> days my low back pain was worse than ever and now i have another <laughs> slip disc <laughs> fantastic you know touching upon uh, touching upon this also uh the jefferson call what you spoke about the knees over toes guy right uh i seen this very interesting conversation which tim ferris had with andrew huberman okay. so andrew huberman is the for context for people watching probably the most popular health uh, health influencer and uh, doing a great job they spoke about certain they spoke about how certain practices right by practitioners take 10 12 years to actually get into research studies mm. right something like knees over toes guy he talks about it a lot maybe 10 years before he's actually doing this knees over toes guy thing he got rejected by all these physios yes. and all these people but now studies are being done on him so if you're doing something and you maybe getting hit you have your science to back it up it's helping you something i can see right now is the carnivore diet mm. right see i'm not a proponent of certain kinds of diet i like to believe in balanced meal of protein carbs fats right it's my belief that does not mean anyone is wrong all kinds of diets can coexist right as we know right but you have to give nuance you have to you you can't say that the carnivore diet is the number one diet you know fruit suck vegetable suck that's essentially the clickbaity yeah it was and then uh two years after that movement started now carnivore 2.0 picked up which is essentially carnivore plus fruit plus fruits 
salary oh, and now they'll yeah. add a little roti in there yeah. <laughs> and like what you back to the same <laughs> yeah yeah oh but this vegetable is good if you cook it enough and uh, yeah that's actually one of the craziest theories that the carnivore like almost bro psychology although that guy carnivore md and lane norton have like yeah. debates on this <laughs> constantly but this idea of fruits versus vegetables and the bro science is strong here okay because <laughs> <laughs> Here's the theory. It's like just to spell it out. Fruits were evolutionarily meant to be eaten, and vegetables were evolutionarily not meant to be eaten. Right? A plant does not want you to say eat its roots or eat its stems or eat its leaves, but a plant wants you to eat its fruit because animals would eat the fruit and shit out the seed, and then the new plant would grow from there. So it's an evolutionary tool to propagate the species. and that's why you say can't eat a bhindi raw yeah um i can see some like you know weird connections of this but you can cook a bhindi and eat it and then the logic they give with why you can eat animals is because animals have a way to defend themselves that's not chemically based yeah they can run away or they can fight the plants have no physical defense systems that way so they have chemical defense systems and hence they've said that it's better to eat only fruits and not vegetables one of the most toxic uh, pieces of content that i see we have this health and fitness community also uh, which uh, we we talk a lot like every it's like 4 500 members we're talking a lot on it it's just crazy passionate people talking about these multiple topics mm. so one of the topics so i've used the cgm right and the cgm has tremendously helped me it shown me what uh glucose spike what foods basically spike my glucose the up, ultra human the ultra human one hmm. what uh, foods spike my glucose up more than it more than i need in that moment right how tempering my blood glucose in that moment helps me to have better energy cognition i've seen it with the data i've used the data and it's improved my energy levels like crazy yeah. now here comes the issue where people <laughs> every day of they make their whole personality you come every day fruits are bad why eat this banana see how it raises your mm. there's no context to it are you if you're going to work out use that energy what's the problem you know if you're going for a walk if you have no other option if you'd rather have a you know a bowl of chips i'd rather choose a banana no I take the glucose fulfill my hunger where the problem comes is when they create content there's one side of again health and fitness who comes in cgms propagate this no the the problem is people are making this clickbaity content and ruining the entire ecosystem of why it's made there's no tool that is going to help you, magically help you improve your health absolutely in fact ankush and i chat about uh, the cgm yeah. here and there and i always say that ankush you should use one your i believe all these extra things are the final 5 to 10% at most Once you've optimized all the things that are the simplest <laughs> thing to optimize that you don't need a CGM for a five year old could probably tell you that go to bed on time eat a little don't eat right before going to sleep have a balanced diet don't drink too much don't smoke once you've done all these basic things then you can optimize then but otherwise ninety percent of the work is not related to knowing when your blood glucose is spiking whether you eat sabudana or poha. While it's fascinating that you do this, <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's like, what level has Ankush reached, bro? That he's like, but that's the level you've reached because yeah. I assume, like you're not like imagine you're you're out partying late Saturday night, you know, engaging in just terrible food and drink, and then you're checking your glucose. I mean, like you know, what's the point? What's you're, the point? What's the point? It's just for everyday usage, and it's very contextual also. It's not like. putting out things saying this is bad you know this is the data what happens right how i optimize for it and it could help you problem is what people say this is bad you know yeah, this, this is, is bad it's yeah. like i was like bro last night you partied na you could have sat and had 2 kg of sabudana <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it would be better for you than doing that you know i'm yeah. a big i'm actually uh, uh, i talk about this a lot this uh, this idea of addition by subtraction okay So I think most of the benefit that is to be gained in people's lives is not by putting in more things but by mm. taking things out. And we live in this culture of putting in more things constantly. 
Yeah. Like I do this, so I have to take this supplement to balance this out, or I, you know, like I'm drinking a lot, so I'll have a uh, electrolyte before going to sleep. You know, and we ha- live in this culture because adding things usually comes with an instant gratification, and removing things actually doesn't come with that. It is a more delayed gratification. That's why I think we've gone towards this culture. But I do think 90% of the gains are to be had by removing. Yeah. So there is this uh, again. I'll touch. I'll slip in another chapter mm, of the book which covers exactly this: how less is more. Mm. Less is more. Basically, when you start a health and fitness plan, just bring the basics in first. Remove processed food. Introduce. Uh, uh, sorry. Remove processed food. Uh, remove bad habits like drinking a lot, smoking a lot. Right. First, eliminate things. Right. And then you have only few things left. which you can do once you eliminate the same thing in if you look at investing you just think about it mm. it's not about what you have to do first remove expenses Or first no. remove expenses <laughs> so that's a financial plan remove yeah. expenses what you have left with is the money you can invest mm. but when you're investing the money remove certain things do not invest into companies which are very high on debt do not invest mm. into oh. speculative companies so once you remove companies right then what you have to pick a small is... portion mm. and from that you can kind of make better decisions so there is there has been good data which i put out an example of these certain types of errors how just removing things is the first step to actually so interesting yeah yeah, yeah exactly so less is more it's it's so to I like think. apply that on to like a day to day life thing it's like if you remove a lot of these things the few options you have now whether it is go for a walk or it is read a book will both benefit you tremendously yeah. you know which you can then pretty much not have any but if your options are either party or go for a walk then yeah. you know you're going to be a little stuck this and again that comes down to biohacking per se there's nothing wrong in biohacking right the biohacking essentially what is biohacking you're just changing the environment around you to better improve your self right now the issue is everyone now there are different types of biohackers there'd be four different biohackers one guy saying i saw this uh, i saw some video saying uh, if you're rich have blueberries <laughs> and if you're poor have pomegranates <laughs> Oh my god and if if you're rich have blueberries blueberries will solve your <laughs> neurological issues second uh, biohacker no don't have fruits third biohacker oh don't have blueberries and pomegranates have low gi fr- who do i listen to you know all three are biohackers <laughs> who do i put my trust in and all three are probably individually in great health uh one is not one is not <laughs> okay ठीक <laughs> So we want oh, Mr. Good. Blueberries. <laughs> we won't go on whatever. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will not believe, guys, uh, how many points we had to discuss. And I decided at the start that I am not going to try to go through them. Okay. I am very happy. Actually, we got to deep dive more into your dad's journey. We got a lot touch on those aspects. I think there's a lot we have to discuss in the nutrition space. Okay, I wanted to get to this whole protein study, but maybe we'll do another one soon. Focused on that. Yeah. I think uh, your dad's journey, amazing journey, which I spoke to you on the phone about. I think that's what I wanted to do this about first. So impressed. Would love to meet your dad. Maybe even one day have him on to first hand talk about it. And uh, but next time we have to get into this uh, protein study. You want to just. Uh, give people your twitter handle and uh, guys convince him to come on insta man also <laughs> but uh, i'm getting i'm getting more active on insta insta is essentially me just repackaging my twitter on my yeah i've seen yeah more yeah. active on on twitter because more of the things i do is the written word so is my, it a one to one like everything that goes on your twitter you make it onto insta or okay not very occasionally whatever is relevant so my twitter is ankush d14 my insta is ankush d08 hoping to be more active mm. uh in the introduction to the book uh yeah, get more book, people to the idea to the book so the book I'll is be, called uh, and when is it out uh probably in november uh so the official date will be out one month before and it'll be open for pre order i also write a blog which you can look out at my substack right almost once in every two weeks and write on topics on health fitness investing psychology basically everything under the sun and this was fun this was just us having fun yeah, time flew yeah this was a lot of fun 